felt the lovely man he is and uh, such a great contributor. It really warms my heart. I hope that you were a little touched by that, you know? It's really nice to get an award for how awesome you are at being a part of an industry. So uh, here's the keynote. And uh, I worked with Ryan and his team on this because uh, I really wanted him to come and give you something that you could apply to your business tomorrow to do a better job of driving revenue through social. Now you're probably very familiar with Hootsuite, uh, and Ryan Holmes is the founder and CEO. And what he's about to present to you, I, I think you're going to want to take notes on this. You're going to see some structured thinking about social strategy, and you're going to see some specific case studies and examples of actionable things that you can do in your own organization, no matter if you're a one-man band or a giant corporation. Ryan is a tremendously fun and interesting young entrepreneur who's riding a really exciting ride right now. So please give Ryan Holmes of Hootsuite a warm welcome for the hand. Thank you. Well, I have to say uh, thanks to Susan for making me rework my deck. Um, to get going, for those of you that uh, don't have your phone out, I want to do a little exercise. You guys pull out your phones. And after you've got them out, just hand them. This is an exercise of trust to your neighbor. <laughs> hand them over. All right, well, now everybody's got all the phones handed out. Uh, I'm going to begin my presentation with total focus and concentration. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so today I am uh, exposing all of our trade secrets. I said that no competitors could come today. Uh, you're welcome to retweet though. I want to talk a little bit about how we as a social media company are marketing. Uh, using digital, social, and content marketing. And uh, as Susan said, I hope we uh, give you guys some real tactical gems that you can take with you. So how many people, quick show of hands, know this guy? All right, so a few of you do. Uh, this is Commander Chris Hatfield. He was the uh, most recent commander of the International Space Station, ISS. Um, he is an amazingly skilled man, he's a, a skateboarder, a test pilot, an author, a speaker, he also flies spaceships, really great guy. Um, probably the thing that he is the most known for at the moment is uh, a cover that he did from the International Space Station of David, uh, David Bowie's Space Odyssey, Ground Control, the Major Tom. Um, a great cover, it went absolutely viral. Uh, 20 plus million views. Uh, I, I had the pleasure of uh, meeting up with him a few times. He's come by our office and talked to our team about social and, and what he did and what was so interesting and, and special about that. And I think the thing that, that dropped my jaw the most and really made, got me thinking about this, this thing that we're doing with digital and social right now is one of the questions from my team, which was what he thought was the most interesting event in social to date. And, and he really actually said that he thought it was the Apollo landing. So the landing on the moon. That was when humanity was connected with amazing content, all on the same page and watching a major event. Um, and, and it really got me thinking about this revolution that we're now seeing. For those of us that are, are marketers in, in the audience, and I think there's probably a lot of us, uh, we know that the, the customer journey is, is revolutionizing. Um, we know that we no longer have a captive audience. We know that interruption advertising doesn't work as well. And that 70% of the business-to-business -business customer journey is now conducted digitally. So this presents a big opportunity for everybody here. Classic funnel has changed. So our, our typical funnel, sales and marketing funnel, has now changed. It involves social and digital at every point in the funnel. So take an example of a, a car buying decision, and we're at the point of awareness. 
So I'm thinking about looking for a new car. Consideration. I'm thinking about an electric car. Who out there has got an electric car? What are you liking? Preference. I'm thinking about getting a Tesla. They look great. Purchase. I just bought a Tesla. Loyalty. I love my Tesla. Advocacy. You should buy a Tesla. And we can all picture this happening in social. We can picture it happening on Facebook, happening on Twitter. So as marketers, we all have to get involved in this conversation at an earlier point. We can't wait for people to come to our own properties and fill out a form. So this is a challenge for everybody to think about this. As a company, we are practicing real-time marketing. So we think about this as content marketing, the process of creating great content that's compelling, storytelling, stuff that our customers and potential customers like and share. Social marketing, the process of distribution, engagement, and measurement. So sending messages out through our social channels, having conversations with customers through social channels, and then measuring the effect of those conversations and the work that we do there. And then ultimately, social advertising and amplification. So thinking about which content is working really well, and then amplifying that through social advertising. This is something that we practice. And, and this is gonna seem like a little bit like an ad, but it's tr not, trust me. I just wanna tell you about what we've done, some of the results that we've gotten, and then tell you about how we got them. So Hootsuite, we're the world's uh, leading social relationship platform. We help people connect and message to their customers, power users, small media business, enterprise, on social media. We have over nine million users, 747 to Fortune 1000 companies use us. Social is in our DNA. Uh, this is a, a little graph of the number of followers that we have on Twitter compared to some other big social brands. Um, and our growth over the last five and a half years as a company in terms of our number of users. The thing I want to point out on this graph is that we did no paid advertising for the first three years in our company. We bootstrapped it for the first year, which is expensive and we were broke, so we had to resort to highly effective tactical work. Um, and as we moved on, we started to layer in more and more paid advertising, a lot of it social, uh, over the past couple of years. But the, the majority of the growth, the exponential growth that you see here, was fueled by a lot of the tactics that I'm going to talk about today. A little overview of our channels. We work on multiple channels. Our blog, four and a half million visits a year. Twitter, I mentioned. Google Plus, LinkedIn. We're doing a lot on LinkedIn influencers. Uh, I, I, as a brand and a person, have 365,000 uh, followers on my LinkedIn Pulse uh, account. Great channel for those of you that are, are dabbling, exploring with that. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Pinterest, SlideShare. We're working on all of these channels and building them all out. We think about our, our team, our social media team, as a newsroom. So our team is composed of journalists. They are empowered to make decisions rapidly in real time. So when news events happen, they can think creatively about ways that they might want to get involved with these, these pieces of, of information and, and really create content around that. I'm going to show you guys some of the pieces today. but. This is really the overview of what our content team looks like. I think I'm going to get this deck online later on. This is our current content and marketing team. Um, this has evolved over time. We're now a company of about nearly 500 people. Uh, this really started with one marketer, which was probably this guy, uh, working on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, we've evolved and evolved and grown this team. But this is what we're looking at today, content and brand, a lot of writers thought leadership team that I work with really closely on some of the thought leadership work, design team, blog team, social team, video team, all really working proactively and quickly to put out amazing content that resonates with our customers through our social channels that I outlined. Their mission and our mission as a marketing organization is to entertain, inform, empower our audiences and customers, and potential customers. And we're doing this through real time. So thinking about the entertaining, informing, and empowering of our, our customers, first step of this is the content marketing, the creation of content. So while traditional marketing talks at people, content marketing is talking with them, creating a connection with our brand. How many people know this guy? All right, well, I've got a treat for those of you that don't. 
Um, Blend Tech is uh, a company that sells blenders. Seems like kind of a you know, boringish space, lots of people in it, you're competing with Sears, Walmart, and everybody else on the planet. Um, these guys have been around since 1975. Nobody heard of them before 2000. What they did in 2000 was they started this, this program on YouTube, this channel, this campaign uh, called Will It Blend? And what, is, what we see here is the founder of the company and, and he's blending some glow sticks it looks like. And this really connects with all of us. We've always wanted to throw something we shouldn't in our blender. So let's watch him throw blend. something in his blender. That is the question. <laughs> I love my new iPhone. It does everything. But will it blend? That is the question. Let's find out. I think I'm going to push the smoothie button. on YouTube have asked me to blend an iPhone, so I did, but I have another. And I put this on eBay. So who doesn't love that? I love the slow motion. No. So uh, obviously that's a pretty low production cost to that, um, that piece of content. Uh, they've got a nimble team. They're building this out all the time. Uh, the result for them is huge. It's, it, and it's really all capped by creativity here. 700,000 YouTube subscribers, 290 million views to date, and the sales for the company increased 500%. It's pretty great stuff. Uh, Chipotle, have you guys, have anybody seen the Scarecrow piece? Show of hands, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to show this one. It's amazing. Great content. I think it's about a 15 minute video. It's, it's a great piece of content. It is not an ad. It is entertaining. It talks about f big farming. It talks about uh, genetically modified crops. It talks about all of this stuff. The team put this together. They're obviously going to be winning some awards. Uh, the result out of this, the content viewed 12 million times and they have a companion app. The companion app's downloaded over 400,000 uh, times. It's a bit of a video game. You walk with the scarecrow, do a bunch of stuff. Amazing results. Content that resonates and that the, the audience and your customers love. Uh, bring it back to a small business story, Jenny. Jenny's Splendid Ice Cream. Uh, Jenny is a foodie. She loves her ice cream. Lemon blueberry yogurt, roasted strawberry buttermilk, salty caramel, all sound delicious. Um, she created a cookbook, which is content, and, and put this out there. She wanted to give foodies the ability to, to build out ice cream that wasn't just kind of a sloppy mess that looked like homemade ice cream at the end. Uh, this went very viral. New York Times bestseller. Tons of top tier press coverage. She went from 2 to 11 storefronts out of this and sold in uh, over 700 grocery stores. Uh, our team recently put together some content around the Harlem Shake. Who's done the Harlem Shake? Anybody? Yes, yes, we've got some Harlem Shakers up front. Um, Harlem Shake is a viral video that a couple of kids in a, in a dorm room put together. Um, one of our 20-something content team saw this video, saw that it was going viral, and decided to do a response to this. Um, they, they put out an email to the company, meet at lunch for 15 minutes, we're going to film the Harlem Shake, 
I'll show you guys what it is right now. <laughs> I, I forgive me for putting you through this, uh, but this is what the Harlem Shake is. loved it. Um, so what did this what did this do for us as a company? Um, we were responsive. We got it out quickly. Uh, because of that, we were covered in a Mashable roundup on this, along with Pepsi, Red Bull, Intel, as all brands that were doing this. Uh, we had 116,000 YouTube views. So pretty great amount of views. That results in content traffic on our website, which results in signups, registrations, which results in us generating some revenue at the end of the day. Uh, all of this off of a sub $300 production. This is available for pretty much anybody in the audience. So tips on content creation. Be the show, not the commercial. This little picture of Felix. Red Bull has done an amazing job at being the show. Brands and, and channels are now licensing their content, paying them to show their brand to the world. That's amazing. Don't get stuck in routines. You have to be agile, you have to be nimble, you have to be looking for things that are viral, that are resonating with audiences, and you have to distribute that content through your social channels. But just get creative with this. And tell stories with heart. Obviously, blending an iPhone takes a lot of heart, so things like that really can, uh, can connect with your audience. So the second step of our real-time marketing strategy is social marketing. We think about this as the distribution, engagement, and measurement of content through social channels. A way of thinking about this, distribution, engagement, and measurement through the channels, is the, I, I, I think about this as a water slide often. The water slide slides are your channels. That's your Twitter, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Google+. All these channels that you can send content through. The engagement part is the pool at the bottom where everybody's having a party. Okay? And that's where the conversations happen about the content after it's pushed through the various channels. As granddads everywhere say, fish where the fish are biting and they are biting in social arenas right now. So a couple of examples, JCPenney at the Super Bowl. JCPenney did a great job with their mittens campaigns. Proceeds went to the uh, US Olympic team. What they did was start with a, uh, I'm gonna read this because I think it might be hard for some of you guys. They started with uh, what looked like a, an accidental tweet. Uh, it says, Tog down Sidwalax is to Seattle going to the runway with this, so it looks like they're drunk or something. Um, then they put a follow-up, oops, sorry for the typos. We were tweeting with mittens, wasn't, supposed to be, wasn't it supposed to be colder? Enjoy the game, go Team USA. Uh, other social channels jumped in, Doritos. Uh, slow down, JCPenney, have some Doritos. And uh, Kia also gets involved. <laughs> hey JCPenney, need a designated driver. So engagement happening in real time on the Super Bowl hashtag, millions of people watching the results. A lot of brands jumped in, Kia, Coors Light, uh, Pizza Hut, Doritos, Snickers. Uh, JCPenney was the second most mentioned brand at, on social at, so, at the Super Bowl. And uh, over 120,000 social media mentions. Cost of doing this? Zero. It's, it's the cost of having your team there thinking about what you should send out being creative. Uh, who doesn't love Dr. Zeus? Uh, recently, it was Dr. Zeus's birthday. Our content team saw this was coming up. They built out a Dr. Zeus-inspired guide to Twitter. Um, it took a day. Designer, uh, content writer, built this up. It's one of our most popular uh, pieces of content to date. Over 150,000 views. We share through all of our social channels. We share on our blog. 10,000 plus shares uh, out of this. 
In terms of thought leadership, I'm doing a lot of work there. I find that thought leadership is a great way to get content out and talk about things, subjects that you can't as a brand. So it's a, it's a very strategic way for us to get uh, different types of content out. Again, this is LinkedIn Pulse, uh, LinkedIn Today. Uh, I put together an article, the seven must have free mobile apps. One thing that we did with this uh, that I'm going to point out to everybody is we really leveraged our team, our, our nearly 500 employees, to help send out content for this. And I'm going to give you an illustration of the amplif amplification effect that this can have. So the average Fortune 500 company, social media team of eight, they've got 10 accounts, Twitter and Facebook, 10 on Twitter, 10 on Facebook, 150,000 likes on Facebook, 15,000 followers. The effective reach out of that, if you multiply it all out, 1.7 million. So let's think about this. If you can get everybody in your organization involved on social, on your channels, and distributing through their channels as a word of mouth. Same size team, 163,000 employees, an average Fortune 500. Uh, they have on average 111 friends, 25 followers on Twitter. Massive effective of reach. Now, we don't you know, sit in front of all, of all of our employees and tell them you have to send this message out, but putting content in front of your team that re is relevant to them, that resonates with them, and that they think is interesting is only going to result in them getting messages out the door, and those messages are going to be seen as word of mouth as opposed to brand advertising, as opposed to interruption advertising. So something for you all to think about. And this scales, it scales down from Fortune 500 down to you know, small, medium businesses, one, two person operators. So the results of this seven tips uh, article that we put out, uh, over 6,000 click-throughs, uh, the mobile app had a 78% bump in downloads of that day. Uh, we were one of the recommended seven apps, if you can believe it. Uh, so our app had a big bump in terms of downloads. Another example on, on the engagement front, uh, you might recognize the McRib here. Uh, somebody from the McDonald's team was sending a tweet out from their account on the McRib. Uh, our team started having a conversation with them, um, back and forth, great example of social selling, but also engagement. The result in this, we landed a major contract. The cost of doing this, nothing. So, some tips on social marketing. Tip one, invest in your social channels. Use your email to build up your Twitter following, to build up your Facebook following, investigate new channels, try out Snapchat, try out Instagram, try out everything. See what works for your audience and see where you can build audience easily. See every comment as a golden opportunity. Think about comments that are on your blog, think about mentions in Twitter, and, and look for people that you want to engage with and have a conversation with them, huge opportunity. Final tip, empower your team, get them involved. Let them know about what is happening, what's going out the door, be transparent. Final piece on real-time marketing, amplification. So what we try to do here is identify great content and amplify it. We want to find content that is a 10 and make it an 11. This is my Spinal Tap reference for the day. Two people have watched Spinal Tap in the end, it's great. <laughs> um, so how do we make content an 11? Um, over 10 years ago, there was no such thing as social advertising. Uh, today, uh, social advertising is going to double in the next year from one and a half billion to over four billion dollars. So we really need to think about how we engage in social advertising. Our goal of social advertising is to attract versus interrupt. So we want to find great content that people love already and just amplify the distribution on that. Get that in front of the right people. Not put content that's uninteresting to people in front of them. So a couple of good examples of, of people that are doing social advertising right. Uh, Fox Sports did a great uh, campaign with uh, Social Sideline. Um, this is a companion product uh, for college football. Uh, what they were doing is effectively driving people to their social sideline uh, product. Uh, as people came on board, they were in real time commenting on games. How they got people over to the property was to talk with them through social, get targeted audience, and put out advertising that engaged them. Asking questions like, which college team has the most explosive offense, and other questions like that. 
they managed to drive a great audience over to their property. This campaign for them was a massive success. 45% lift in social referrals, 314% uh, increase in weekly reach of uh, the Fox Facebook uh, page, and they've now created this same campaign across all of their properties, MLB, uh, NBA, NHL, NFL, and soccer. Uh, more small uh, business example, Sam's Chowder House there in California. Um, they have a, a it looks like about a four and a half star rating on Facebook for their, their restaurant. Uh, I want to go visit this place after seeing some of the pictures, but they have a, a great team. One of the co-founders is a marketer. They were putting out a lot of content on, on social, uh, organic content, and found that they were having great effect with that. They were targeting uh, people that were foodies and self-declared foodies through social channels, and they amplified the content to those people. Results on this, 19% increase in monthly guest count, 58% increase in sales after their most successful post was promoted. So again, that post was already doing well. They just amplified it through social and they got a 58% the next day. So really actionable results out of that. 160% increase in weekly reach after two months. Bonobos, uh, New York retailer, they did a great Twitter campaign. They had a bunch of inventory they needed to clear up. Uh, they offered $30 chinos. Uh, in order to unlock the deal, you had to retweet uh, the special. So the virality on this was huge. It went through social graph. You, you recommend it to your friends. Your friends retweet it because they want the deal. On and on and on. Great success. They got 100 first time customers. So if you think of the lifetime value of that out of this, and a 1200% uh, ROI in one day. So pretty effective campaign there. Um, back to something that we've done that we really like in terms of social advertising. Uh, we found that social selling as a keyword was resonating really well with our audience. We were having a lot of people that were retweeting, broadcasting messages around social selling. And uh, we built out white paper and content around this. So following our first step, create great content, distribute through social channels, and now look at advertising and amplifying it. The results for us and how we identified the great content was uh, looking at the, the engagement through our product. Uh, we saw that uh, specifically social selling was, was highly uh, retweeted, some of our most popular organic content. Um, we saw a lot of impressions through Twitter on this. And as a result, uh, you know, we're, we're creating content around this specific set of keywords. Twitter ads were performing at one-third the cost of other channels for us. Highly effective in terms of uh, the price we spend. And the Twitter ads generate over 3,000 leads per month for us. These leads are invaluable to our enterprise sales team. And so we started to move our spend primarily uh, into uh, social channels, Twitter and Facebook. So where, what are we now doing globally in our organization for social advertising? We're increasing our social advertising by 16% since 2012. Big percentage increase for us. Uh, as I mentioned, the first three years, we didn't do any paid advertising, period. We then dabbled with ad, uh, search ads, all sorts of banners, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're now shifting a big percentage to social. We're 4 uh, our social advertising team, so building out a team there to be able to manage that. Uh, Twitter and Facebook are our lowest cost per leads out of all of our channels, and 22% of our budget is now allocated to social ads as uh, social media spend. And social ads, we're looking to drive 38% of our leads in 2014, up from 12% last year. So tips on social advertising. Uh, test big variations. Uh, for those of you that are doing A-B testing, test broad variations, test wildly different images, wildly different copy, and out of that start to hone in on what's working for you and your audience. Rotate your ads regularly. We see a, a one-fifth uh, effectiveness, so our, our um, click-through ratios drop from about a 0.5 to a 0.1 uh, after the second view. So people get sick of, of uh, social ads pretty quickly. You've got to be changing them up and iterating them. So, so pay attention to that. You can't just let one thing run. Uh, and amplify organic to paid. So find great content, find the winner, find the 10, and make it an 11. So for us, what does all of this together look like? What does real-time marketing actualized look like? 
Uh, we're seeing a 450% increase in our blog traffic since 2012. 50% of our blog traffic comes from social and social channels. 19% of our unique page views uh, uh, of landing pages are driven by social, so that's all of our specific um, landing pages around uh, lead gen, doorway pages, etc. All, all of them, 19%. And 31% of uh, form fills are driven by social for our enterprise product. So one last story, and then uh, I'm going to go to you know open it up to the audience for questions. Uh, 2011, uh, Egyptian Revolution. Uh, we saw the government of Egypt shut down all of Twitter and Facebook traffic. Um, we saw that smart people were circumventing that by using our product. They were using Hootsuite to log in, register, and then send messages out to social and uh, using that to coordinate. So we saw a 7,000% increase in registrations over a seven day period. We started to see people using our product to talk about what was happening on the ground. I saw one person, uh, Sonia Verma, she was a journalist, and she was talking about ripping up banners to use as bandages. And in under 140 characters, she managed to connect so powerfully and convey what was happening on the ground to millions of people around the world instantly. So this is an amazingly powerful medium that we all can get in touch with. Uh, it's connecting citizens to governments. It's connecting consumers to brands and businesses. And we as marketers are on the frontier of this. We have an amazing opportunity and I hope that you all take advantage of it. Thank you. So I think uh, Ian Wolfman, a friend of mine, is going to uh, be the mic runner. Here's Ian. Uh, so he's, he's been looking at the Twitter feed, I think, and probably has a couple questions there. And then uh, we'll also be going around to the audience, jogging I, around. I actually thought it would be more appropriate to do all our questions off the Hootsuite platform here. Um, so if you're sending them in, give me a good one. All right. Um, Why don't we also just run my, because it'll take people a while to you know these 140 characters. Has anybody got a question right now? <laughs> I also have swag for people that have questions. First five questions gets an owl. Hi, um, I'm wondering if uh, Hootsuite reaches out specifically to influencers on social media more than, uh, you know, because some people are more active on social networks than others, so not every like will have the same value. Do you measure uh, the uh, influence people have or in any way to, to yeah, find absolutely. value? Yeah, no, great question. Uh, we have a, so we have a large community team that does just that. Um, we have cloud and cred integrated into our products. So we're able to filter by influence. And uh, out of that, we do find and look for, for people that are influencers. Um, we, we speak to them and talk with them. And we also talk with them about if they need VIP service, getting them on board with our product, how we can help show them you know, what we can do and, and uh, you know, get deeper with them in terms of a relationship. Absolutely. You get an owl. Thank you, I'm Engel Fonseca from Adspirant. Um, so, synthesizing what you're saying, you're saying then that selling th through social media is more of a consequence than just a specific goal? I mean, selling is a consequence of doing things right? It can't be ju just a goal? What do you think about that? Well, I, I think it gets back a little bit, I, if, I'm, if I'm interpreting what you're saying there right, um, if, if that, that fun slide that I showed, you know, a lot of, classical sales marketing funnel is like you just sit there and wait for the lead to drop in your lap through the form fill, right? But now we need to start that conversation at an earlier point. We need to be tracking people down on social and people are so receptive. If you, if you send them a message on Twitter, I've gotten to conversations with people that I would not believe I'd have a conversation with just through sending them messages back and forth and starting a dialogue and conversation. Uh, so I think it can start at a much higher point in the funnel and the whole way through the funnel. And I think that that's a lot of what we're talking about in social selling. Uh, and I've got a white paper for you, so you can track it down and learn more about what we're doing in social selling there. 
Hi, my name is David Rose from Ditto Labs in Boston. Okay, so, so a lot of the conversation that's happening now is through photos. People are sharing photos without hashtags, without text. Like what's, what's the strategy for helping brands listen to those photos? Yeah, so we, uh, we have um, a couple of exciting things in the works with, uh, with Instagram and Pinterest, and uh, we're, we're looking forward to rolling those out. But yeah, photos are absolutely uh, a part of the strategy that brands need to adopt, and uh, you know, we, we want to give them the tools for that, so, so stay tuned. I'm selfishly going to ask a question. I would love for you to comment on what, um, what role you see Hootsuite playing in social media in the amplification of broadcasts as, as Twitter specifically uh, begins to position itself more um, woven into broadcast media? Yeah, I think that uh, our, our product has, has always been highly used by publishers and, and as publishers um, are looking for new opportunities uh, in, in reinvention over the last couple of years, uh, We've been helping them with that. Twitter, I think, is doing a really interesting job. They're doing a lot in second screen. They're doing a lot with um, Nielsen and others. And, and I'm excited to see what they have to do. We want to help people amplify through advertising within our product and working with Twitter to do that. Um, so you know, it's, it's nascent and evolving. And, and you know, we don't necessarily have a complete end game as to traditional broadcasting at this point. All right, let's take a few from the Hootsuite platform here. Um, are social selling budgets growing because of filtering or because you're reaching new people? Uh, I'm, I'm going to just throw a, an opinion on this and I don't have anything to necessarily back it up. I think that uh, social selling is, is proving itself to be more effective right now than other channels uh, because you're able to connect with people and have a conversation. People are open and in a, in a medium like Twitter they're also kind of publicly called out. So. When people start hitting a CEO up on a social channel, uh, it behooves them to kind of have a response. And so I think that that's something that we're seeing. Also, everybody is, is acceptable and transparently visible in this day and age. I can find out who works in various departments through LinkedIn, pretty much any company in the world. And um, that is a, a very new thing, a very new occurrence over the past couple of years. Ryan, what did your team spend the $300 on the Harlem Shake video? <laughs> Tequila. Uh, no, it was, uh, that, that's, I, I, I guess we just threw that number out of the air. It's, it was two editors, uh, hour and a half, you know, for us, camera crew. I, I don't know, it, it's labor cost, and uh, it, was, it was a very low hit for that. Just because I'm one of your buddies, there's a cute girl named Caroline and asked, how much of a role has your beard played in your success? <laughs> Have you considered market, a marketing campaign just for the beard? I'll take one from the audience. It's, it's instrumental. Hi, my name is Sven. <clears throat> Super big fan from Hootsuite from the beginning a couple years ago. I've actually got a technical question. Okay. Um, I've been using the app for at least a couple of years, and for the last couple of months, every time I try to use it, it asks me to sign it again, and sign it again, sign it again. Is there any solutions for that coming up, or? Sure, is this for mobile or for web? Um, iOS. iOS, okay. Well, uh, yes, there is. We, uh, <laughs> we've had, a pro I've had the same problem. Trust me, I'm, uh, we're all over it, and uh, we, we're going through a couple of iterations there, and, and uh, expect some fix to that soon. You keep updating? Yeah. Okay. Stay tuned. We're working on it. Absolutely though. I, I'm, I'm on iOS too and when I get logged out it drives me crazy because nothing I hate more than logging in on an iPhone. Opinion. Uh, do you think social media ads work for enterprise software as well? And if so, how? Yeah, we're enterprise software. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I think you, you know you have to you have to do it effectively, but this is this is how we as a company are able to get so many enterprise users on our product. It has to it has to be sincere, and, and I think it really has to um, be thoughtfully rolled out. Um, but you can you can do it in a very effective way. Um, you know happy to, to you know expose more of our playbook to somebody if they want to go over that is come grab me but 
we're doing it really well, I think. Where's 1,000 life lessons? Raise your hand. Over right there. Over there? Okay, cool. That's a good question. Um, what's the number one reason businesses are not getting social that you've seen out there because you've got such a broad perspective? And can I have a Hootsuite owl? <laughs> I got limited supply, but I, I think the first couple people and they, and that person can get one. Um, I, so, so things that are limiting brand adoption of, of social, uh, I, I would say you know involvement from the top. I think in in a lot of historically a lot of the people that were talked about like Comcast Frank, who's like a, a pioneer uh, back in the day, he kind of just took this on as a Skunk Works project. A lot of interns take it on or get assigned it as a as a Skunk Works project. Um, but we're seeing that brands that aren't involved, aren't engaged in social, uh, they stand to have their lunch eaten by their competitors. And so, you know, if they're not there, their competitors are going to be. So competition is a scary thing for a lot of people and not being made at the party is a scary thing. Brands need to build up that newsroom that I was showing. Like, you need to build up your chops. You're not just going to be able to instantly say, okay, let's do social now when it becomes important. You have to start investing now so that you have your skill set built up, you have your newsroom built up uh, when it really becomes strategic and important to you. So as people that are you know, in the trenches that are doing social in the organization right now, it is your job to convince your executive, convince your management that this is going to be an important thing for your organization and get them on board with it. Any other questions from the audience? I think we got time for one more. Right up front. Hi, I'm Nick Davida from uh, Private Equity Fund. Um, so could, could you shed some light on uh, your product plans? If you are expanding into like new networks, so perhaps uh, content discovery or search, whatever, or like what, 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 what's next? So yeah, we, I mean, we have a, a lot of exciting stuff on the roadmap, and uh, as uh, somebody that loves product, it's never soon enough or quick enough. And, and uh, but we um, we're, we're doing quite a bit uh, content discovery, absolutely. So we want to be able to expose content. A lot of people, their first question when they get on social is, "What should I send?" Um, and, and so we want to help put together content that we feel through algorithms that will resonate with an audience um, to, to share out to them. So we're putting, that something that we have coming up very soon and it's gonna be super exciting. Um, we're helping with simplification through our, our Hootlet product, hootlet.com, uh, helping make it easier to schedule messages and, and we, I feel that that's uh, hugely important for people that don't necessarily wanna get into a full like 747 cockpit, they just want a simple interface to be able to manage that. Uh, we're looking at how we manage across an organization to help people work more effectively. Uh, and, and you know, all of these are drivers for us. And, and then advertising, how we can help people easily advertise on social channels, amplify content that's effective. Amazing. Ryan, thank you so much, man. Right. Let's hear a round of applause for Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to give you a generous selfie. There we go. Uh, it's uh, owl people, I've got about five of them.